Hello everyone and welcome back to hashtag RTA underscore VS, the real time anatomy video series. In this uh, section, today we'll be talking about some important ligaments which are capsulating the hip joint. We'll talk about their attachments and functions and we'll also look at certain important muscle when you uh, explore the hip joint ligament, what important muscles will be surrounding it. So the section that you see right in front of you is the one which we're going to discuss. Uh, but before switching on to the ligaments, we first need to identify some important landmarks, some important hints, some clues, which will also help you uh, uh, understanding the attachment of those ligaments as well. This here is the anterior view of the hip joint. Uh, I'll tell you how to differentiate between the anterior view and the posterior view of the hip joint if you are not able to find out how exactly it is the anterior view because it is all surrounded by some ligaments and muscles. Well, in that case, you need to look at the femur bone, which is quite helpful here. The femur bone between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, you will see a line extending anteriorly and that line is called as intertrochantric line. Well, lesser trochanter can be, uh, can be seen more uh, uh, prominent from the posterior aspect. But if this is a greater trochanter and that over there is a lesser trochanter, which is more posteriorly placed. So this line here is intertrochantric line. And from the posterior aspect, you will see intertrochantric crest. Attachment of the capsule of the hip joint is on the intertrochantric line and not on the intertrochantric crest. Now, this is you can see this is a capsule of the hip joint and it is surrounded by some ligaments here. You, you cannot see the neck of femur from anterior aspect because it's attachment of the capsule here on the line. But when you see the hip joint from the posterior aspect, the capsule is attached to the neck of the femur itself and not to the intertrochantric crest. So if you're able to appreciate even a small part of the neck of the femur, then you can say you, you can say that you're looking at the posterior aspect of the hip joint and not the anterior. So well, this is an anterior aspect here. Now obviously if this, this here is a pubic bone. Now look at this, that is a pubic bone. And this elevation here is an ischial tuberosity. If this is pubic and this is ischial tuberosity, so needless to say, this is a ischio pubic ramus. And guys, if this is a ischio pubic ramus here, now lateral to the ischio pubic ramus, more superior lateral, this foramen in this region will be the obturator foramen. Now, if there is an obturator foramen in that region, you can see a muscle which is arising from the outer margin of the obturator foramen and membrane. This muscle is one of the muscle of the medial compartment of thigh, that is obturator externus muscle so starting with and you can even see the fibers that are running transversely and then going deep to the neck of the femur and to the inter uh, this trochanteric fossa so this is the obturator externus muscle moreover you can see a nerve which is piercing it this nerve which is piercing this obturator externus will obviously be supplying it as well this is the posterior division of obturator nerve well, I'm sure you know that obturator nerve, it comes out as anterior and the posterior division. And it's the posterior division of the obturator nerve, which pierces obturator externus muscle. And then it goes into the medial aspect of the thigh, supplying the adductor magnus muscle as well. Apart from this, <clears throat> if I see on more superior aspect of this picture, now that is an iliac bone. And a muscle that you see, which is on the outer aspect of the iliac bone, which is also called as a gluteal surface of the hip bone, this muscle is the gluteus minimus muscle. The muscle that you're looking at here is a gluteus minimus muscle. This is the anterior border of the iliac bone. And if this is the anterior border, you can see that there are two elevations which can be appreciated here. That is anterior superior iliac spine. And this is anterior inferior iliac spine. Anterior superior iliac spine is the origin of the sartorius muscle, the longest muscle of the body. It originates from the anterior superior iliac spine, whereas the anterior inferior iliac spine is having two important attachment. One is the rectus femoris muscle. One is a rectus femoris muscle. You can see that is a cut section of rectus femoris and one ligament that is called as a iliofemoral ligament. I'll come to that iliofemoral ligament in a minute. Let me just identify a few other structures outside first. So one of the attachment to the anterior inferior iliac spine is this uh, rectus femoris. Look at this cut section of the rectus femoris muscle here. I can also appreciate in this section a tendon here. Now look at this tendon, which is actually going to the lesser trochanter. Let me just mark that. 
this is a tendon of the iliopsoas there is a tendon of the iliopsoas which you can see going toward the the lesser trochanter <clears throat> now coming to the, the the main topic that is the capsule uh, the capsule and the ligaments of the hip joint there are three main ligaments which capsulate the hip joint one is called as a pubofemoral ligament well as the name suggests it is having a major attachment toward the pubic bone then we have a iliofemoral ligament which is the the largest as well as the strongest and then we have a ligament which is the weakest ligament of the hip joint called as ischiofemoral ligament present on the posterior aspect now from the anterior aspect let's first find out the pubofemoral ligament and guys to reach the pubofemoral ligament now look at this once again this is a pubic bone this obviously is a iliac bone so obviously this eminence that is in between is called as what iliopubic eminence this this elevated part here is called as a iliopubic eminence so this ligament that you're looking at here is the ligament coming from iliopubic eminence and also from the obturator crest i'll show you the obturator crest into the next schematic picture so guys this ligament which is coming from the iliopubic eminence and also from the obturator crest is called as the pubofemoral ligament this ligament here is called as a pubofemoral ligament that is a pubofemoral ligament coming from the iliopubic eminence and from the obturator crest and also from the obturator membrane as well but mainly from this iliopubic eminence and obturator crest where it is going i'll tell you it is going toward the iliofemoral ligament only now the main ligament which is present in front of the hip joint and it is a major major support of the hip joint in fact this is one ligament which is responsible for uh, not allowing the trunk to fall back in the erect posture or in the standing posture is called as a iliofemoral ligament all also called as a ligament of biglow and this is the strongest ligament in the body as i said anterior inferior iliac spine is having an attachment of the rectus femoris muscle one and in the lower part of this anterior inferior iliac spine we have attachment of this ligament it is inverted y shaped ligament that is pubofemoral i'm sorry iliofemoral ligament so we have a fibers going like this this is the vertical band of this ligament and then we have the horizontal band of this ligament as well vertical band and the horizontal band so this is the vertical band and this one here is a more horizontal band now as you already know the attachment is to anterior inferior iliac spine and inferiorly they are attached to this line that is a inter trochanteric line well as i said if you are looking at it from the front you cannot see the neck of the femur at all so this is the inter trochanteric line which is the point where the capsule of the hip joint is attached and these ligaments are nothing but the thickening of the capsule only so you will see these ligamented also extending to the this inter trochanteric line this here as i said is the horizontal band and this is the vertical band of the ligament called as the <clears throat> iliofemoral ligament also called as ligament of biglow the strongest ligament in the body it's one of the strongest ligament in the body that is ligament of biglow so these are the two ligaments which you can appreciate from the anterior aspect one is the pubofemoral ligament and then iliofemoral ligament and both its bend you can also in between you can actually also appreciate one more thing if if you see look carefully guys you can see this is the bursa for the tendon of swass major muscle that is the bursa for the swass major muscle which you can see in between this iliofemoral and the pubofemoral ligament so these are some important uh, structures which you can identify from the anterior aspect of the hip joint and with respect to the ligaments well there are few more ligaments that we have uh, uh, for the hip joint but uh, let me show you a, a picture from the gray's anatomy it's more of a schematic picture in which you can see the ligament that is called as a ischiofemoral ligament but before going to ischiofemoral ligament guys how these ligaments will look like in the schematic picture so let let us use one of the picture from the gray's here so i've already marked these ligaments so that is a pubofemoral ligament you can clearly see this eminence called as a ilio pubic eminence and this crest can you see that above the obturator foramen this is a obturator crest 
So this is a ligament called as a pubofemoral ligament coming from iliopubic eminence and then you can see in the lower part, in the anterior inferior part, it is merging with the vertical band of iliofemoral ligament only. This is the horizontal band of iliofemoral ligament. You can see they both are arising from what? From the lower part of this anterior inferior iliac spine which is also giving attachment to this muscle that is rectus femoris. That is a cut section of the rectus femoris muscle. If I see the same uh, uh, the hip joint but from the posterior aspect now look at this and this immediately will tell you the what I was telling you about that when you look at the hip joint from the posterior aspect I can appreciate some part of the neck of the femur because the capsule is not attached to the intertrochantric crest that is the elevation between the greater and lesser trochanter lesser trochanter can more prominently be seen from the posterior aspect and this crest is intertrochantric crest and you can see the attachment of capsule is on the neck which is medial to the crest this one ligament that you see here coming from the ischium bone that whole thing is a ischium bone and that is ischial tuberosity so you can see the ligament coming from the ischium bone and then it is going superior laterally and then merging with the capsule of the hip joint only and forming a part of zona orbicularis this ligament is called as the ischiofemoral ligament the ligament is called as a ischiofemoral ligament this whole thing is a ischiofemoral ligament all these fibers are of ischiofemoral ligament as i said it it uh, encircles the capsule of the hip joint only and contributes into the zona orbicularis part. It is the weakest ligament out of the three. The three ligaments that we have, the weakest one is the ischiofemoral ligament only. So this is a, these are the ligaments which are capsulating the hip joint. Now if, if I go inside the hip joint, if I just uh, cut through this uh, capsule of the hip joint, I'll see two more ligaments inside. One is a ligament which is actually bridging the gap between the acetabulum and that is in the acetabular notch and that is called as a transverse acetabular ligament look at this picture guys this here is the acetabulum right and what you have around the acetabulum is the labrum and stretching in this acetabular notch this ligament is called as the transverse acetabular ligament this is a transverse acetabular ligament Acetabular labrum is a fibrocartilage. Right? It's a fibro and cartilage we have. When I say transverse acetabular ligament, we only have the fibers. There is no chondrocyte inside. So it's, it's the same collagen bundle which is forming the acetabular labrum and forming the same ligament called as a transverse acetabular ligament. But obviously there is no chondrocyte inside. So it's not a cartilage. It's not a fibrocartilage. It's just a fibro structure. It's a ligament. And then you can also see one more important ligament here which is stretching from this transverse acetabular ligament. In fact, it is actually stretching from the both end of the acetabular notch and also stretching onto the acetabular ligament. This is called as the ligamentum teres or the ligament of head of femur. This is a ligament of the head of the femur. This ligament, as we said, it is attached to the transverse acetabular ligament and you will see the ligament is then attached onto the a small cavitation that we have on the head of the femur called as fovea cavitis so it is attached to the fovea cavitis of the the head of the femur well this ligament is considered not to have a great role in the uh, the stability of the hip joint but it plays an important role in transferring or transmitting the blood vessels and the nerves to the head of the femur now what you see deep to the transverse acetabular ligament we have a kind of foramen which is formed behind it and that gives passage to the the branches of the obturator nerve and the obturator vessels coming inside and then those nerves and vessels can use this ligament and can reach the head of the femur this ligament is seen surrounded by the synovial sheath you can clearly see in this section it is surrounded by the synovial sheath sometimes the ligament might be absent but sheath usually persists so you might only see a sheath extending from the from the acetabular notch region to the the fovea cavitis and there might be no ligament inside very rarely the sheath and the ligament both will be absent but most of the time they both are present uh, a scenario is that when the ligament is absent but sheath is still present and as i said rarely the ligament as well as sheath both will be absent so these are some important ligaments of the of, of the hip joint 
and especially as I said, because going with the video series, it is a real time anatomy video series. So you should be able to identify, especially these ligaments when you see it from the anterior aspect, the pubofemoral, the iliofemoral ligament with its vertical and the horizontal band and some important muscle when they try to explore these uh, ligaments, you might see some ligaments and tendons which are surrounding them.